It was only supposed to be for the winter. I was moving to Colorado. It was just supposed to be for one winter season. We have to rewind back to 2001 and 2002. I finished undergrad. I did a year of AmeriCorps in Oregon. And at that point, I was doing a long distance relationship with my boyfriend at the time. It was time to come back. I moved back to upstate New York, Saratoga Springs. I don't know if you've ever been to Saratoga Springs, but it's a really interesting town. It's an old Victorian town. It's beautiful. It's known for its horse racing and the track. But there's a big discrepancy between the haves and the have-nots in that town. And we kind of found ourselves among the have-nots. And it was just this big contrast between people that really had to grind it out and work for a living. And I was driving my little you know, 1999 beat-up red Dodge Dakota. Then you had Skidmore College, which is one of the most expensive universities in the country, with people driving around at you know, age 18 and 19, a car far more fancy than I will ever have, and that's OK. So moved back. Long story in itself, relationship went the wrong way. So we went through a really difficult breakup. And I ended up living literally in my friend's closet because I was finishing out the farming season in the summer. And at that time, I would farm in the summers, and I would work at a little coffee shop in the winters in Saratoga. So I moved into my friend's Maddie Ann's closet. They were generous enough to offer me their giant walk-in closet, which actually had a window in it. And it was just big enough for my little inflatable air mattress, my collection of vinyl records, and my record player. It's really all I needed at that point in my life. And so when I was farming in the summers, I met a friend named Doug. And Doug would also farm in upstate New York in the summers, and I met him at farmer's markets selling our goods. And he would spend his winters in Crested Butte, Colorado. And so when things went sideways with my relationship, which was unexpected for me, Doug said to me, Jane, why don't you come out to Colorado for the winter? I thought, I thought well, that sounds like a really good idea. So that's where I was in my head. I prepared myself mentally. I was going to finish out this farming season. and. Packed my little Volkswagen Golf up, and Doug and I were going to drive out to Colorado <coughs> together. He had done this many years before. He had a job at the ski resort, and he said he could easily hook me up with a job. And I said, awesome. This sounds like a great plan. I needed to totally shift my perspective, start fresh, and spend a winter in Colorado. About a week before we were supposed to leave, Doug calls me and says, Jane, ski patrol didn't offer me a job. And knowing now, what I didn't know then, is Ski Patrol in Crested Butte is a very competitive position to get. He said, but I did get a job at a resort in Maine. I'm not going to Colorado this winter. And I was like, what? Doug, you're supposed to be leaving in a week. What am I supposed to do? He said, well, you have, you have a job lined up still. You should just go. And that's what I did. I fit everything I could into my little black Volkswagen Golf. And I left by myself not really knowing what I was getting myself into. And I don't remember much about that road trip. I remember stopping in Ohio to see a friend who I had just done AmeriCorps with a couple years earlier, stayed with him for a night. I remember driving through Kansas City because I saw an art, an advertisement for an art exhibit that I was interested in. And I went to this museum in Kansas City, and the only thing I remember that, I don't remember anything about the art exhibit, but I remember parking my car in the museum garage, and it was improperly labeled with a clearance, and I had my bicycle on top of my car. That didn't end well. <laughs> and then I remember getting to Albuquerque, where again I was supposed to stay with some friends, and I was running really low on funds in Albuquerque. Low enough to where I wasn't even sure I could fill my gas tank up. So it was right around Thanksgiving of 2002, and thankfully I had some friends that I could stay with twins that I used to work with at the coffee shop, actually, in Saratoga, Josh and Jesse. And so they put me up for a few nights and then got me this really random job washing dishes in this diet diner in Albuquerque. But I'm not even sure I could find it yet, even if I had to. And so I stayed there for a few days. I scrubbed dishes and made enough money to put some gas in my car to make it all the way to Crested Butte to start my job. And I'll never forget these roads. I drove Highway 114 from Lake City into got us in on Highway 50 and it was snowing and the roads were curvy and I hadn't had much experience driving in the snow. I was a kid that grew up in New York City, didn't learn how to drive and I didn't really think anything of it. I was just plodding away. It was beautiful. Got to Highway 50, hung a left, hung a right on Highway 135 and that was my first glimpse of the Gunnison Valley and it, it didn't even seem real to me. It was 
so beautiful. If you haven't been to Crescent Butte, I recommend that you go. You're driving down Highway 135 and all of a sudden Crescent Butte appears in front of you. And for a city kid, it was just paradise. I, it, it didn't make sense to me. There was a girl from New York City living all of a sudden 30 miles from the nearest traffic light. So I got a room in the hostel that night when I rolled into town, and I think I picked up a can of soup in the grocery store, warmed up my little can of soup on the stove at the hostel, and the very next morning I was starting work. And so I rode the bus up the hill to the base area, met my fellow employees, and this was probably a few weeks before the ski area opened, and I was hired as a lift foreman, which I thought was hilarious because I maybe had ridden a ski lift once or twice in my life. And all of a sudden, I was a foreman, not just of one lift, but of three. So I had to learn what on earth I was doing. And I was the only woman, I was the only female lift foreman in this whole crew. So I met you know, a bunch of guys that became like brothers to me. We ended up finding a little condo together. And I had an incredible winter. It was, I, I didn't really know what I was getting into with that experience, but it was everything that I needed it to be. And winter was drawing to an end. And, in my mind, I was, I was heading back to New York. That's where my family was, and that's where my roots were. And I had a friend at that time in Crested Butte. She's like, you have to stay for the summer. Summers are just glorious here. You have to see all the wildflowers and see all the trails with what they look like without snow. And I was like, OK, I'll stay for the summer. She convinced me. And so moved to a house in town, stayed for the summer. And, and really, the, the summers in Crested Butte are just as magical as the winters. They call it the wildflower capital of Colorado. It's incredibly beautiful, and we were so incredibly spoiled living there with pristine trails and single track right outside of our door. You know, living here now, I get sad because we have to drive an hour and a half or two hours to go skiing. And it's really that. You know, it was in Crested Butte where I met my husband. I came for a winter, I didn't leave for almost nine years. And it was just, it was a good life there. That place really spoiled me. Um, Amazing scenery outside your doorstep, a complete tight-knit community that would be there for you. People didn't lock the doors to their car, didn't lock your bike up. Everyone's doors were always open to you. And that's, that's that. To this day, I still have stuff in a storage unit in upstate New York. I have no idea what's in there. Clearly, I don't need it because I haven't seen it in over 10 years. And that's how Colorado stole a little piece of my heart. <laughs>